Destroy Your Neighbors is a 2024 Shutter exclusive splatter comedy that went out of its way to bite off more than it could chew. What kind of movie is it? The best description I can give it, and this is this is going to sound harsh, um, but it's as though someone told Adam Sandler to make his own version of Mandy, and and I don't I don't entirely mean that as an insult. Obviously, it's sort of an insult, but not like 100. percent You know, because like that's an interesting combination. I want to know what that looks like. Don't you? <laughs> You can probably tell I'm a little ambivalent on this movie. Will you like it? Statistically, probably not. Did I like this movie? I believe so, yes. It is messy, it is imperfect, and I found large stretches of it quite irritating. But, I don't know, as it went on, I, I fell into the movie's rhythm. It won me over, I guess, but it had to pull out all the stops to do that. And, you know, so, uh, now, a few days later, I, I gotta tell you, it hasn't left much of an impression on me. But, you know, I had a good time. Can't deny I had a good time. I should mention, also, I'm reviewing this movie because it won a poll I held in my Patreon at patreon.com slash scaredycats. And that was a fun experiment and something I want to do more of in the future, so feel free to suggest movies you want to see people vote on in the comments. That's how you leverage a small monthly fee to hold a portion of my fate in the palm of your hand. What you do with that power? Well, that's up to you. Destroy All Neighbors tells the story of Will Brown, a nervous wannabe prog rock musician. As the story unfolds, Will descends into madness. Well, actually, no. He, he doesn't so much descend into madness as take a sharp left turn into madness, when he accidentally manslaughters his horribly loud monster man neighbor, Vlad. What follows is a classic farce, but with more blood and guts that thrown in than one might typically get in a, in a in a classic classic farce. Each problem Will tries to solve only opens up new problems, and so on and so forth, until he's in well over his head. Nothing goes his way, and he doesn't help matters by being a, a generally kind of useless and insufferable guy, incapable of getting out of his own way or, or doing anything to, to solve problems in his life. The story covers a lot of ground thematically and does so with a surprising sincerity given the ludicrous world it exists within. It's about the nature of self-destruction, learning to overcome artistic anxiety, the need to build community, what it means to create, but more so than anything. It is a, a love letter to progressive rock, but like a, a kind of sarcastic, semi-ironic love letter. They mock prog rock in, in the way that only someone who truly loves something is capable of it. Like, like how the more you like something, the more you kind of hate most of it, you know? Like how nerds are. You know how nerds are always mad at their favorite stuff? I don't mean to brag, but I don't know a lot about progressive rock. Not just because nobody should, but because I don't know much about music in general. Like, I can barely handle beginner rock. You think I can do rock that is progressed? No way. So I, I can only really reflect back what the movie has to say about prog rock and whether or not the movie does a good job paying homage to that. And yeah, it definitely does, maybe in a lot of ways that it didn't even intend to, but also the line between rock, progressive rock, and heavy metal feels kind of blurry in this movie. There's a lot of horror imagery, naturally, that's why we're here. A lot of it feels like more of an Iron Maiden cover than, than anything else. Like, I associate prog rock more with psychedelic fantasy than industrial horror, so I don't know. I could be wrong. Again, I don't know much about prog rock, so if you're an even bigger nerd than I am, let me know in the comments if I'm off base here. The film portrays prog rock is all about hugely ambitious music that attempts to do the absolute most that it can, the most technically challenging, diverse, and excessive work an artist can muster. It's about giving it your all, leaving it all on the table, using every idea you have, and having the hope, courage, and trust in yourself that it'll work. It's also, of course, dorky loser music for dorky nerds. And most people will not like it, and they will make fun of you for liking it, but that's okay. The movie constantly reminds us, most people won't like it, but the right ones will. Hey, wait a minute. Will is the name of the protagonist. Whoa, bet you thought you snuck that one past me, movie. You're gonna have to wake up pretty early in the morning to get one past me, like 11 or 11.30 or something like that. And in that spirit of excess, Destroy All Neighbors never does anything halfway. Every line is delivered the hardest and biggest it can be. Every character's personality and foibles are on display no matter what they're doing. Every set, every prop, every costume, every bit of the visuals is heightened just a little bit past where it should be. It is loud, it is over the top, and it makes bizarre choices at every turn seemingly just to see if it can. 
Like for example, in one scene, Will is anxious about his neighbor Vlad. Vlad is a monster man who's gonna hurt him, so he's scared. And there are a lot of ways one could visually depict this. What Destroy All Neighbors lands on is, is Will having a nightmare where Vlad is an evil ceiling fan, and so Will tries to pull the little ceiling fan chain out of his nose, and then the ceiling fan Vlad vomits viscera all over him. In a lesser movie, well, not a lesser movie, I guess, but a movie that didn't feel the need to, to try that hard, would just do something like uh, Will's sleeping and then Vlad appears and it's a little jump scare. And so they also do that. They do that as well, because they do everything, every idea, throw it all in, always. L look at the prosthetic on this guy's face. Why does it stick out like that? That looks so fucking bad. But I guess they thought it was funny that he had a big cartoony tire mark on his face, and admittedly, it kind of is. So, fine, sure, yeah, throw it in. The whole movie is like that. It, it is swinging for the fences, and only swinging for the fences. Even when it definitely should not be swinging for the fences, even when the pitcher isn't even on the mound, it's just swinging away. They are filming every idea they have, even when they don't have the budget, even when it looks like absolute shit, even when it contradicts other ideas they also threw in, even when it contradicts, like, the central thematic through line of the movie. And I'm not gonna lie. This throw it all at the wall and see what sticks approach was pretty grating at first. Vlad especially was driving me absolutely nuts because he just never stops talking or giggling, and very little of what he says is funny. We got off on our own foot. Mm -hmm. I think we can be friends, Willie. Can I call you Willie? <laughs> yes, no, I don't, I don't care. He just has this inconsistent accent, and it feels like an in-joke that somewhere along the way, someone should have told them to tone down. Like it's clearly not as funny as they think it is. Oh, I hate that kind of humor. Yeah, man, it's the worst. I, Bobby Duke, SODC, the bit you thought of when you was high on marijuana edibles, hate that kind of joke. You know, where the joke is how poorly thought out the joke is, and that somehow, you know, just doing a silly voice is gonna cover for it. Yeah, man, it's brutal. I'm a Bobby Duke. The first act is full of my least favorite kind of joke, where everyone is inexplicably hostile and overbearing and just yelling the F word at each other. It's because I know what people want from their music. To fuck! To fuck! To fuck! Fuck off me. Ah, uh, boy! Go find me the fattest goose you can get! And then, fuck yeah! I got this fuck all oh, my music! Ha 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 ha! Turn it down! Nice fuck. You got I don't have any fucking croissants, Augie! But, hmm. God help me. I've become the type of critic that I hate because I think that's actually a stylistic choice. The movie wants to be overbearing because that's what progressive rock sounds like to most people. It's it's playing with you. Now, will that help you enjoy the film more? No, probably not. Does that mean that I enjoyed that part of it? No, it was still irritating. It's still tiresome. And you won't be paid to watch it like I am. So you can just like turn it off and you probably will and you probably should. But if you can get past it, which is a big if, because I can't guarantee you will make it past it, then the movie will be for you, and you'll probably really like it. You're one of the right ones. Now, don't get me wrong, at no point does the movie chill out. It never stops being like that. You just start to see how the elements come together in more interesting ways than you might have initially assumed. Take, for example, this guy, Caleb Bang Jansen. He's an obnoxious, washed up musician who thinks he's hot shit for literally no reason. And early on, he throws a tantrum about how everyone always has to say his full name, Caleb Bang Jansen, and it's just so much. Uh, yeah, my name's William. Nice to meet you, Mr. Jansen. I, uh... No, it's Caleb Bang Jansen. You have to say the whole name. Ready right, to do another take, Mr. Bang Jansen? Caleb, 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 Caleb Bang, Bang Jansen. Jansen! The joke does not land. It's so loud, it's so annoying, and I know the character is meant to be annoying, but it's annoying to the audience, not just the characters in the scene. And it does not work. But eventually, and I don't, I don't know where, at some point, much later in the movie, I did start laughing every time they said his name. They do it really casually, as though nobody even thinks twice about this ridiculous demand, like it's a perfectly normal thing to do. I played a song for Scott today, and 
it seemed like he liked it. And then Caleb Bing Jansen came in and just started shitting all over it and just like. That works for me. And, and not in the way that like repeating an unfunny joke a bunch of times eventually becomes funny. In a more subtle kind of way. We're like, yeah, why wouldn't you? That, that's what he wants to be called. It's, so just call him that, who cares? Let him have it, it's fine. There's a lot of that. A lot of rough edges that seem to exist just to annoy the audience. A lot of weird escalations over minor conflicts. And a lot of characters that feel like they're from rejected SNL audition tapes. They seem more interested in making one another laugh than making the audience laugh. And if hearing that, you feel like you'd be in on the joke instead of the joke being on you, you will find it funny. Otherwise, it'll annoy the shit out of you. Honestly, it might annoy the shit out of you either way. Will is a very unlikable protagonist at first. He's snippy, cowardly, and self-involved. He's so conflict-averse that he'd rather call the police on Vlad than, like, go ask him to turn his music down. And if you've ever lived in an apartment building, you know this kind of guy. I once had a guy show up at my door at 3 in the morning complaining that I was making too much noise and stomping around while I was hunched over my computer editing a video like a little goblin. I hadn't moved in hours. I'm deeply unhealthy. How could I possibly be stomping around? So the guy demanded to be let in to talk about it. And when I said I didn't really feel like letting a stranger into my apartment at 3 in the morning because he thought I was sitting too loudly, he complained to the building manager and, I, and we got we got served a warning letter because of that. What was we talking about a movie or something? So at this point, I did not like Will. And again, the film zigs where you thought it had zagged because Will eventually becomes cool and likable by the end. He learns to let go of the shit and get over himself, and it does feel earned, but also very confused because what what is Will's problem exactly? Well, he doesn't want to accept help, but also he helps people too much. And he's making too many excuses, and he's too caught up in his own bullshit, but also he's obsessed with working on his own shit, and he just is doing it all the time, but also he's not doing it enough. And also, he has unresolved feelings about his dad not believing in him, which we never actually get to see, we're just told about. And also, he's a perfectionist who can't let go, and also, none of his shit is any good. And also, he holds on to resentment too long. You get it, right? He has every motivation. Every motivation they could think of, they just throw it in. We're gonna use them all. And what's more, they're all conveniently wrapped up by him making friends with ghosts of the people he keeps accidentally killing, who are simultaneously hallucinations, but also very much real ghosts in equal measure. Both of these could be interesting, so I don't know, why not use both of these mutually exclusive ideas? Not making that choice is, is a choice that the movie makes. The accidental killing, though, that isn't a problem that he needs to solve. That is his path towards self-actualization, and it's fine. In the language of the movie, his, his constant killing people is good for him. That's what he needed emotionally. And all of the ghosts totally get it. They're fine with dying to help him become a better guy. It's really grim, but it's also treated in this unfailingly upbeat way. You can kind of see how it walks this tightrope of being at once very sweet and sincere, but also mean-spirited and, and sarcastic. It is somehow both without being neither. And that is a difficult thing to pull off, and it's what makes the movie work, in my opinion. How it's this horrific, nihilistic splatterfest and kind of a chill hangout movie at the same time. It makes you want to be friends with a diverse group of ghosts of people you've accidentally killed. Actually, now that I say that out loud, maybe that's not a good thing. The movie was directed by Josh Forbes, who I know nothing about, and produced in part by Alex Winter, who must have had a big hand in it because his DNA is all over this fucking thing. Alex Winter is, of course, best known for the role of Ted Theodore Logan in the Bill and Ted series of feature films, which are similarly madcap over-the-top adventures about passionate musicians whose music is inexplicably important to the world. He's also the director of Freak, a high-energy special effects heavy horror comedy. You can kind of see, like, this movie feels feels very Alex Winter-y. Even if he hadn't been involved, you'd, you'd get the impression. Winter even gets a small role in the movie as Will's lawyer, and I bet in this scene, you didn't even notice that he actually plays Bill S. Preston in Bill and Ted, you fake fans, you frauds. That type of simultaneously sarcastic and sincere comedy is Winter's strong suit. All of his movies are kind of like that, and it works well here. Neither of those elements would work enough on their own, but by both half working, they produce the equivalent of one thing working. Destroy All Neighbors is not greater than the sum of its parts, but I, 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 there are just so many parts. It doesn't need to be. It's a weird prog rock technical showcase, a psychological character piece, and a lazy boner comedy where people do silly voices in lieu of jokes. A bittersweet reflection on what it means to love something most people don't understand and don't like. It's weird, it's excessive, and it's flawed, but it's undeniably fun. You can feel the people making this movie giggling over each other's shoulders as they try to one-up one another. No ideas off the table, no limits, and even if it, if it doesn't work, fuck it. 
let's leave it in. Ultimately, Destroy All Neighbors is pleased with itself, but in, a, in an endearing way. It's daring you to walk away. It seems genuinely to not care if anyone watches it. It delights in getting you to turn it off. So what? What are you going to do? They already got to play with a funny skeleton puppet. They got what they wanted. You can't unmake the movie. They already made it. They win. It feels weird to call a movie this dumb challenging because it's, it's not challenging you in the typical way that one might expect. It's certainly not too cerebral or impenetrable. It's more like it's trying to productively use annoying the shit out of its audience. Kind of like Freddy Got Fingered, like that kind of way, I guess. It's not for everybody, but it's for the right people. And and just who do you think is the target demo for, for this movie? A movie about weird nerd bullshit full of colored gels, psychedelia, cringy comedy, and effects that the film's description refers to as goopy. It's you. It's the people who watch this channel. You you can tell exactly how much you're going to like this one. I think I've... I have fulfilled the brief on this. You, you know whether or not to watch this movie now. Blay, it's me, Count Dracula. No, just kidding. I was just teasing you. It's me, Mildo. I can't believe you fell for that. You're so dumb. Anyway, now that I've directly insulted you to your face, why don't you go on over to patreon.com slash scaredycats, uh, and that's, that's where you can give me money for all of the good work I'm doing. And you want to know who did that? Like, really good? Cooper Holmes? Joe McClory, Liz Widow, James Garford, C.H. Phillips, Gideon, Charlotte Hollingsworth, Devin Kaler, and, and of course, sing it with me, Spooky Heather Sylvia. Take it away, Bobby. Thank you, Mildo. As the official head of being star of the channel, I would like to thank the following people who's also the stars of the channel. Connor Patrick Griffin, Chuckleberry Finn, Jay Tony. Lanston Teen, Rachel Rat, Kato Moore, Carpad, Josh Manes, Hyla Tracy, Louisa Prito, and let's not forget Jesse. And don't worry about how Mildo called you dumb, because we're going to make him go through some kind of sensitivity training or something. I don't know. He's a real prick.